I was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina, in 1932. My father's name was Luis Schifrin. His brother, Roberto, was the first cello of the same orchestra. And the, his brothers and sisters, they were all musical. And for my mother's side also, my uncles, two uncles I have from maternal uncle, they were also musicians. So I grew up in a musical family. And so it was kind of a foregone conclusion that you would start lessons uh, early on? Kind of, yeah. I, I didn't know anything else. So I started with uh, Enrique Barenboim, Daniel Barenboim's father. He was my first piano teacher. And how young And he you? was a friend of my father. He played chamber music with my father. And how old were you when you started piano? I think five, five years old. Were you always destined to be a professional musician? I don't know. I, I mean, there's an Argentinian poet who says, destiny and chance are synonymous. So I, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know anything else. I, luckily, I, I finally got into the profession, but I could have been anything else. Uh, at one point, my father, I started to embrace modern American jazz and play it when I was a teenager. And my father was afraid of the, he liked jazz, but he didn't like the atmosphere of jazz, the possibility of drugs, alcohol, and ladies of the night, and all that. It was a bad atmosphere. So at that moment, he said, maybe you should have a career in medicine or law or something. And, and I went to law school which means that I know how to read a contract now. There are a lot of rules and regulations, like classical, that you can break the rules and you should break the rules, but you have to first know the rules. Also in 1968, you did what a lot of us think of as a remarkable score for Bullet, which um, I think is still one of the all-time great jazz scores of the 60s. Can you talk about what that movie needed, and in particular, why the chase scene, the classic car chase scene, isn't scored? Well, first of all, Bullet, Steve McQueen, was a character in that movie, that very cool and... So I think jazz was very appropriate for that. And cool jazz. I mean, it was not, not a screaming jazz. It was a cool kind of jazz. And now the scene that you're talking about, the, the chase, it's a famous chase. That Peter Yates did a great job. And he did ask me for music for the chase. But there are four minutes of music before the chase. When, when, when the, they, they leave the hospital and then they go into the cars from the parking lot and they, the traffic is very heavy in San Francisco and there's tension and Steve McQueen looks, or the bullet looks through the rear view mirror and starts the gears are very slow, and they couldn't move, and the, the heavies, they have, they have a car, <clears throat> the villains, they have a car, a different car, and it goes for four minutes, that thing, and I kept building, 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 and all of a sudden, bullet does change the gear and start going to one of the lateral streets, and that's when the real chase starts. The director says, you have to have music here. No. We're going to abrupt, abruptly cut it. And silence is also music. The lack of music is going to make a great effect. And besides, you're going to have sound effects. You have to orchestrate the sound effects because sometimes your camera is in, the, in a corner of the hilly street of San Francisco and we don't know what car is coming. The audience in the theater, they don't know which, which one of the cars is coming. It could be Bullet's car or the villains. And they have two different sounds, so they have to listen to that sound. And if I put music there, it's going to be very muddy, and you're going to have problems in the dubbing of, you know, the mixing of sound effects, dialogue, and music. You're going to have a lot of problems, so no. 
and I didn't do it. Did he agree with your choice? Reluctantly. But then, then he realized I wasn't the right. The Mission Impossible is a different, is a, the, the theme of Mission Impossible is like a paramilitary operation. And they had little drums. And I had this with cellos and basses. That's a real Mission Impossible theme. You know, it's, it's a suspense kind of march with some elements of snare drum. Some people think that the syncopations of the 5-4 theme owe something to your South American origins. Do you think that's true? No, no. With, with, in South America, I don't know any music of 5-4. How many Mission Impossible episodes did you actually do after I don't know. I, I couldn't tell. I did many. I did many, but also the, I, I was doing movies and other things. So we had an agreement that I signed an agreement through BMI and ASCAP that any composer who replaced me for each one of those episodes, if they had to use that suspense theme, I would I, I wouldn't do it because I didn't do it. But he would do it, or he she would do it. But we would split the BMI and ask up half and half. So for me it was a good deal because without working I was getting royalties. Do you have a personal musical philosophy or musical vision that guides everything you do? Yes, yeah, stay away from the octaves. Anything besides that? Well, that's enough. <laughs> Fantastic Voyage of Leonard Roseman is amazing. And Patton of Jerry Goldsmith is, is incredible. Can you talk about why in each case? Well, in Patton, there were these scenes in which Patton had this personality where he was bigger than life, he himself. And sometimes the way the director set up big scenes where he thinks about his mission and his, well, he had a big ego, and, and there was this da -da 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 and sometimes he does it with an echoplex, which is an electronic instrument, or sometimes with the orchestra. And, I think, and also there is, a, there is a counterpoint of the march where he has a German team, but uh, and the American team going at the same time. It's, it's, it's incredible. And in Fantastic Voyage, it was a score that uh, it really blew my mind because the, the, whole, the whole concept of a voyage inside the human body, and like, like it would be outer space, but with all these problems and accidents they have and all this, which are going to kill the, the, the body. Uh, it's a science fiction, but also, and, and, the, and the way that, I think that Lenny was probably the only one who could have handled that score. I like an uh, old score of Miklos Roja, Sahara. It was incredible. Hmm. They are all my children.